Hello, my name is Martin Schoeffler, Product Manager at Asapio. So our topic is today how to get SAP data into, into, SAP, uh, into the Microsoft Azure Cloud. And there might be various approaches um, using CDC tools on database level or middleware-based approaches, which, uh, yeah, both approaches have some flaws, yeah, the CDC tools typically don't really know about the logic or the context of the change that is happening inside the SAP system, doesn't know about approvals that are still outstanding or doesn't know about some of the values inside an SAP system that you want to know are more calculated, cannot be easily grabbed by a database uh, tool, but have to be computed then in your target system again. And also CDC tools often require uh, more expensive uh, database licenses, at least for, for SAP HANA, that's the case where you need an enterprise license to run them. And um, the middleware-based approach typically needs OData services or subservices, services that are available or made available through SAP, or that you have to implement yourself in order to pull data from the SAP system. But you never really know when to pull, so um, this also has some drawbacks. It is very, very flexible approach. Uh, middleware layers are probably very, very powerful, but um, of getting the data quickly from the SAP system to your cloud, not always the, the number one approach. So we came up with a solution that sits directly on the SAP system. So it is an ABAP-based add-on that does sit or is installed on the ABAP NetWeaver stack. So it runs on older SAP ECC systems. It runs on s systems. It also runs on other NetWeaver-based systems. So you can also install it there. Um, and it will work the same way. So we only require SAP basis as a, as a core component and dependency. It's also not really important if your SAP system runs on-premise or if it runs on some private cloud or um, if your system runs already uh, on Azure, then that's a big uh, big plus for integrating to the Azure cloud, of course, but it's no prerequisite that that's the case. Um, the tool is also certified for, for the SAP RISE program, um, so you can use it also in, in conjunction with that. Um, and on the on the Azure side, we do so. Our tool provides a connector that does connect to uh, different Azure services. So mostly we connect to the event-based services. So it's Event Grid and Event Hub, or uh, to Service Bus. And from there, you can forward the data to different receivers inside your Azure landscape. Um, we do that because typically the event-driven architecture pattern is, is very um, useful for this kind of publishing information from the SAP system as it happens, because there typically are multiple consumers. So there might be an analytics consumer, but there might also be a application, either a third-party application or a homegrown uh, custom application that you have on the cloud that needs that information. So um, with the typical event pub sub uh, approach, um, you can just communicate the info once and then you have multiple consumers getting them. And we will see in, in our demos, you will see a few examples and we talk about a few use cases uh, more. Um, but in, in the demos, we have two very concrete examples on, on how to do that. What we're currently working on together with Microsoft is in connection more directly to the new Microsoft Fabric um, as suite of tools, where uh, the, the approach we are taking with, with Microsoft is having a more direct um, connect between SAP and the data lake, so that the data lake as a basis for most Fabric uh, services are um, filled directly and don't have to be filled through through the event uh, broker services per se. So what does our tool now offer? So we, we have a, a long, long existing integration add-on um, that's on the market for almost 10 years now. Uh, it was expanded with uh, different use cases or for different connectors. 
Um, and it has evolved into a, a powerful extraction framework that comes with configuration-only data extraction. So that's where the no-code, low-code comes in and where you can uh, keep the mantra, keep your core clean from SAP uh, true. Um, and it, so you configure what data you want and how it should look like in the message payload. And then you connect it to a trigger inside the ABAP application layer. And that's where uh, we can react directly when something happens in the SAP system. We can react immediately and send the change data out immediately. But as is needed in most projects, there's also facilities to do batch loads, which are very, very efficient. We will see later numbers from existing customers, how they utilize that. and. The, uh, the nice thing about the add-on is that it uses the same uh, configuration, basically, to do the uh, real-time incremental events and also do these uh, more initial full load type of things when you need reference data at the beginning of a project where you, you don't necessarily have events for the objects that you want in your, in your, in your cloud system but you need to load them um, to have, for example, the last year of sales order data or the last uh, two quarters of invoices, things like that. You can easily um, use the framework for to do batch loads and then have the same configuration also active to do incremental loads as they happen. Um, so these loads, they all, because we are on the SAP side, we exactly know how how much resources are available inside the SAP system, and we use SAP server groups to make sure that we don't overload the SAP system there and um, to have a well-performing um, load into the cloud system. So what are now these possible triggers that we have been talking about inside an SAP system? So SAP has, for a lot of the business objects, there are what they call internally as a technical object, a business object. And these business objects have events on them. So a sales order has events on it, purchase order, or a material master, um, shell accounts, or invoices. They all come with events that can be activated. Some are active by default. Some have to be activated through configuration. Um, but they are all available inside your SAP system. And then um, you can hook up our framework to react on those when they happen. And then our configuration kicks in to send out the messages. <clears throat> and to not keep that on the slides, but to go more into details, I want to show one example that we have in our system configured. Um, it is an example that sends sales order data to an event hub first for for the distribution, and then we have attached a, a stream analytics job um, to, to read that data and to uh, post it um, for consuming via Power BI dashboard so that you have an up-to-date view of what is happening to your, to your sales data. So I, I want to take the opportunity to quickly switch into the SAP system now to show you how that would be configured in our tool. So this is our SAP system and the SAP system in our network. Um, and we, as all configuration inside an SAP system, we go to the ING and uh, there will be an entry for our integration add-on. And there you configure the connectivity. So we have all kinds of services connected. So I'm just looking for the, for the Azure services and I know that we are sending to the Azure event hubs, and I know it's, it will be in that, um, in that connection. We just have uh, basically two interfaces connected. The one that we are interested in is the sales order interface that we have configured here. And uh, for an interface like that, we always configure how is data extracted, um, how will it be sent, and what will be the trigger. So I'm looking at the trigger first, this is done using the SAP event linkages, where we just connect a business object event. So it is connected here to what's called bus 2032, which is the sales order inside an SAP system. 
that is connected to a change then a created event um, there. And this will fire off this interface then. So if these events happen, it will um, trigger this interface. And this interface is configured with an extraction that's based on our payload designer, where you just decide, OK, which, which are the tables that I need, which is the data that we need. So you can use tables, you can use CDS views to, to combine those. So first, you have to decide, uh, you have to um, define how are these linked together. Um, will I always have data, or will sometimes data be missing? That's where you have the outer joints. And then if you have the tables, you can just add fields. And we already did that for our demo example. So you will add these fields. You see on the left-hand side these more cryptic SAP names that typical cloud developers don't know anything about. So you can map them to have more readable or more, more descriptive field names inside the payload that we generate. And for the event services, we typically generate a JSON payload as that's the typical language or typical format used. Um, and yeah, you can do even more stuff here. You can add a conversion class if you want to add some coding logic to it, how to come up with a value. You can do that as well, but you can just, if it's a simple example, you can also just use the fields as they are here. So and now, if we now would uh, change the sales order, um, an event will be triggered. And I want to show you as well how you would monitor this thing inside your SAP system. Um, and we also have a monitoring transaction for that. And um, here I'm just for, because we have so many connections, just focus on the, on the one we have been looking at with the Azure Hub. And you will then see a list of, so these have been the calls that we did to our event hub um, in the last few hours. And um, there's also one sales order um, change that was triggered here. And if it's activated in the configuration, you will also see the exact traces. So you will see the exact message that has been sent. Um, typically, this will be off in a production environment, but if if the cloud system, the cloud endpoint returns with an error, we will automatically turn it on because typical cloud errors that we see are more, um, more temporary in nature and you can't really reproduce them easily. So it's always good to, to have then, if an error occurs, the, the trace active to see what has been sent, what was the response to, to be better able to troubleshoot it. Um, from here, you can also jump into the application log. So all these entries are also linked to the standard application log. So if you have some kind of integration that checks the application log or links that to a solution manager, for example, then you can use that as well. Because if there was an error, we will also post an error to the application log as well. Um, there are also facilities to, to reprocess messages. So um, for a successful message might not be really useful, but um, it can also be done manually here. You can uh, just reprocess that message and then it will be sent again. Um, if there was an error, um, you typically have a job running to check for failed calls and that will automatically reprocess these failed calls um, uh, in the background. So typically customers schedule that every every few minutes, uh, some do every minute, just to have them reprocessed as, as soon as possible. So, and then with this, uh, with this configuration, we are sending the sales order data into our Power BI dashboard. And I also wanted to show the Power BI dashboard. Bring up my browser real quick. Um, where is it? Just quickly, I have to check where my browser has gone to. Oh, there it is. So there we just built a, a simple dashboard that, that, that collects info from our sales orders, um, 
and divided by by material number, for example. Um, and just to keep it updated with the with the latest info from from that uh, data we sent to the event hub. Um, yeah, so this is one one example where where, where analytics is involved, um, where that is a, a good good approach to 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 bring that uh, further with that stream analytics jobs. Um, another. Example that I wanted to show you is one we built together with Microsoft as well to have a, a approval integration into, into Microsoft Teams whenever a purchase order is created and sent to external approval in the SAP system. So how that happens, configuration is very similar. Um, on the SAP side, we send the event to the event grid. And from there, a logic app is triggered that will then publish a message into a Teams channel, and that's the part I wanted to show you real quick. I triggered one um, earlier, uh, just before the call, and we have a, a Teams channel, um, it's called Azure Demo here, that will get an adaptive card by that logic app. And then in the adaptive card, you will see, okay, there is, uh, there is a purchase order um, created. It has here, it has one, one entry. Um, you just see information on the on the item that was in there. Um, you see the quantity and and the price, and now you can here approve or reject. And when you hit one of these buttons, it will go back to that logic app, um, and it will then um, post this message back to the SAP system, so that the SAP system can update the purchase order with your decision. Um, so that's that's it for the uh, for the very quick demonstration. Um, I will have later a slide where you can also book specific demo uh, meetings to to have a dedicated demo for you that lasts a little bit longer to have more time to go into the details. Um, but I wanted to also bring up some numbers from existing customers so that you can see uh, real customers are using these uh, integrations and what kind of numbers they are actually using and have as a throughput. So like there is a procurement use case where a customer fills a web application that's a, that's a dashboard for their, um, uh, for their procurement team to see what kind of purchase orders have been taken, have was a goods receiver already booked, uh, have the invoices been posted, all that kind of stuff is uh, consolidated into a web front end that they have. And they have these typical daily numbers, so that's not when they are pushing the system, but it's just the day-to-day uh, -day business that they have. So they are sending 200,000 updates to purchase orders every day. Um, 1.2 million purchase requisitions, and they all are combined then on the Azure side for this uh, web application and also for some analytics um, integration there as well. Um, yeah, other customers that have tried more, what, what can the throughput be? Um, they, they pushed it more to the limits to see what is, what is really possible. And of course, it's always depending on your SAP environment, how big is your SAP installation, how many application servers do you have, what kind of server group did you use for the tests, all that kind of things, of course, play into, into these numbers. Um, but as you can see, quite, there are quite some impressive numbers possible with the solution, and we have been benchmarked against other tools and typically come out ahead um, we always thought CDC tools just running on the database will be faster, but it seems like they are not necessarily um, faster. So, um, um, yeah, you're welcome to also do a POC together with us to see what are the numbers in your system, how does it compare um, to these. And now I wanted to take a few minutes to just broaden the the use case space a little bit to not go from the detailed, how did we do it, 
in these demos, but uh, what are what are other customers doing with it? Um, there are quite a few retail customers. Um, I guess they have a lot of pain points with their SAP systems right now uh, and how to integrate, how to get the info out into their cloud systems where they typically have some kind of online shop, need to update stock levels or have to be up to date on what is really what is really sold, what they still can sell, that these um, different systems are more uh, more up to date, more more in sync. Um, that's also a typical place where just data replication falls down a little bit as the available to promise quantity, which is very important to know your real stock level, is not just a number on the database, but is a computed uh, number that uh, depends on your configuration and depends on different data sources inside your SAP system. So it takes into account your sales orders, potentially your, your deliveries, your reservations, um, your purchase orders. So various things can play into that number and it's never anywhere. There is no number on the database that just reflects it. Um, so it's quite hard to take for just a database replication. Um, but it's also what is also really key for these customers is that they have shipping information. So when does the delivery? When when are the deliveries planned? When do they go out? When is the goods issue happening? Uh, things like that are integrated then in the cloud system, typically with some logistics partners that then do the actual delivery to the uh, to the customer, so that the tracking is more more real time. Um, for these sales. Um, yeah, also they always have typically a analytics use case attached to that as well. So it's very um, typical that they use that event driven approach where they send out the message once and have multiple consumers there. Um, but they also have all kinds of other use cases that are might be inbound like get product pricing from competitors through some uh, cloud application and then feed that back into the SAP system for, for pricing update decisions. Um, but there are also other, other customers that use more the procurement use cases that we saw where it's more important to send out info when, when purchase orders are created, when good receipts happen, um, things like that. and. Also, very common use cases are in the area of plant maintenance or um, services or um, use cases where if you have equipment that has to be serviced, that you know where where is it, what is the life cycle of the equipment, um, if it is moved, where is it currently located, when, when is the next service due, um, that these things go out immediately into planning systems and uh, or for example to have production orders published into shop floor systems so production planning is uh, typically happening in the SAP system but there might be then some other systems that do the fine grained planning in the on the on, on the shop floors so they have to be kept in in sync and existing solutions are uh, typically not real time, so they don't get the info when, uh, when they are changed inside the SAP system, but they get it on a, on a, on a different schedule typically. Um, so these are use cases where this uh, approach can be really helpful. Um, yeah, so we have uh, our internal customers globally using our tool. This is uh, not all of them are direct customers from us because we are also licensing the, the tool and the framework to SAP. So we are part of two SAP standard products. So one is the SAP Fee Class integration, um, and the other one is the connector for the SAP Event Mesh from, uh, from ECC and S4. Um, both of these SAP products also use our framework and use different connectors for it. Um, so very, uh, a lot of customers happily use it. And as you might have guessed by the numbers that we've shown, they are typically the big 
customers having larger use cases where a lot of data is transferred, um, where existing approaches might fall down more easily than um, what they are doing right now. Um, we are we have a lot of customers also switching to the event-driven approach from a middleware-based approach because it reduces load on their SAP system because there's not much polling going on, but we push out the data. Um, so all that stuff is there. We also have a partnership together with Microsoft. Uh, we are in close exchange with them on how to improve the connectors what to do. There's also an entry on the Microsoft Azure Store. Um, and as you have seen in the beginning, we are in talks to support Microsoft Fabric, um, which is pretty new um, to also integrate that with your SAP system. Um, there is documentation available publicly. Even if you don't have a contract with us, you can go there, check what the, what the configuration would look like, what you have to do, what you can find there. There are also some demo videos up already, um, just with the links here in the slides as well, um, that you can also double check. This webinar will also go on um, and be published there as well. And there are, of course, ways to, to contact us for, for real life demos or to have a more in depth technical sessions. Um, there's a web. Uh, form that you can fill out or to find and book your uh, your demo session. So it's typically either with myself or with my colleague Benedict, um, where you can book directly through the website. You can also contact us by email, of course, if no matching uh, slot is available. Might be that your time zone is not uh, reflected in our in our booking system, or that it's just uh, no, no slot is available. Um, or if you have more questions regarding licensing or as more sales related topics, then you can also contact my, co uh, my colleague Florian. Um, he also has a, a booking tool where you can book meetings with him as well. Uh, thank you so much for the webinar. Um, have a good day.